All right, everyone. Welcome back to the MC Events Podcast. I'm your host, Joey Capallo, joined by my co-host, Gillen. Hello. And our special guest today, Randy, or RVM3. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. I'm very excited to be here. We are excited to have you as well. So for those of our fans out there who don't know who you are or don't know what Crown Quest is, could you tell us both who you are and then why Crown Quest and you, you know, go together? Absolutely. Uh, hey, I'm Randy. A lot of you know me as RVM3. They're my initials. Um, and a lot of you would know me as I'm the host and owner of the 1.19 Minecraft event, Crown Quest. Uh, Crown Quest is a event for relatively small streamers to relatively big, um, and it's available to all. Nice. And how long has it been around now? So we started, we started the actual idea around August of 2022, but we had our actual real first event in December of 2022. Nice. Cool. And so tell us about that inspiration to create an event and, you know, where, where all the people came together to make it happen. So I've had some experience in the past hosting some events, uh, small things like a, like a Bed Wars tournament here and there, some party games on Hypixel, uh, a Valorant tournament here and there. And those were all great. But I think a lot of people can understand that games like Bed Wars, they, they kind of get boring. They, they kind of get um, repetitive. It, it's hard to spice those things up because you have no control over those. So I had a friend of mine message me and basically say like, hey, I think it would be cool if you hosted and created like a Minecraft survivor type event. And I hope a lot of you would know what survivor is. It's a, yeah, I think yeah, it's pretty TV big show. on a lot of people's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And I talked to some of my friends and some of the uh, moderators in my personal discord, just a small little discord. And we basically discussed about like running a Minecraft event, but like through completing challenges. Mm -hmm. And that got the ball rolling a little bit with a lot of us, um, a lot of the friends who had usually hung out with each other. And we decided that we should do an event that was game filled, but also had something unique that was something you hadn't seen in other events before because a lot of us had participated in other events it would be cool to have, have something that was like oh okay so it's it's mini game based and there's a winner at the end but w what could be something cool and so based on that idea the, the ball just started to get rolling yeah and so what is the current team look like for crown quest who all works on it and how is that kind of fleshed out since the beginning so it's kind of started to mold around kind of a core. Um, mm -hmm. We started off as just like a, a group of friends who had played in tournaments before and uh, did a lot of content creation together. It was a lot of the team moderators, the builders, developers. We, we all There was about 10 of us, I would say, at the beginning. And we just decided that we liked Minecraft a lot. And we really enjoy building together, hanging out in late night VCs building. And so the nine or ten of us decided let's just continue that fun but let's play together and so it consisted of myself uh conix cat our tigers sakaji um it's ninja zero kelvin subi the platypus joe the frog uh and then we had two other past moderators named anime sb and lolifer um and since then we've had needs for new things so we've involved new people like eventually we want we really wanted a social media manager so we brought in paw x pie who's very talented uh, everyone on the staff is super, super talented. Um, then we got a composer to join us named uh, Adam. Um, and then we had an artist who we've been working with many projects before, helping a lot of us with our PFPs, a lot of our Twitch things. So we brought in an artist named Spicy Spell. And then we needed, of course, Discord moderators because, I mean, with the server growing big, we had to bring in new people. So mm -hmm. it became more of like whenever there's a hole that needs to be filled, we try to bring people in. Yeah. Know? makes sense um so more specifically with uh crown quest uh when you had your mm -hmm. original idea for it how do you go about designing the games brainstorming like what kind of games you want to have in it so the immediate idea we had um was that we need to have something that represents all aspects of the game um 
a lot of people focus on when you think of Minecraft event, it's whoever can out PVP each other or mm -hmm. out parkour each other. And there's just so much, there's so much more to the game than just parkour and PVP. So we wanted to get a game that represented each aspect. So we wanted a parkour game. We wanted a PVP game. We wanted a crafting game. We wanted a building game. We wanted uh, a teamwork game, a, a game you had to work around mobs. Like every aspect that we considered important to the game, we wanted to build something around that and something that like players could use their own personal knowledge and experience of the game to be able to play. So we took a lot of inspiration from different things we had seen, different games we had played that weren't Minecraft, and a lot of the games just started to come together like that. Um, and more specifically, what is usually your role for working on a lot of these things? Uh, uh, I'm big on organizing. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm big on scheduling, uh, big with community, and I am the lead uh, coder and developer. Mm -hmm. um, before Crown Quest, I had absolutely zero prior knowledge of plugins, command blocks, uh, overall code. I had a little bit of um, information from a Python class I had taken, but apart from that, I had little to no learning. So um, I had some very supportive friends who helped me out, but nice. basically I I'm going to go, I'm going to go with lead coder mm -hmm. is the, is the best way of summing it all up. Yeah. And so B also said that organization role is a big part for you. How mm -hmm. do you, how do you view that as, you know, trying to get everybody to work together when you're bringing it was already sounded like 10 plus people that work on the event. So that's a lot. That's a big mm -hmm. team to try to get to all work on, you know, one mm -hmm. thing. Um, I think the biggest thing when it came to organization and how to get that many people at the beginning to work together was a lot about creative freedom. Uh, um, it, it's, it's really easy to get people motivated to want to build and create and, you know, let their ideas go if you give them their complete freedom. Mm -hmm. So I found that the biggest thing through organization was to not harp on people, not backseat, not micromanage, just kind of give them like a, like a, like a roadmap of what you would like to see, and then just let them create their own image of it. And mm -hmm. through that, it became really easy to organize the staff. Um, they're all great. They're all extremely talented builders. And so just letting them create whatever they thought represented the, the general idea was it was just extremely easy. Yeah, that makes sense. Give them the space to, as as the kids say, let them cook. Absolutely. <laughs> I jokingly act like I'm not one of the kids too, because it's funnier. <laughs> and then you said you got a lot of inspirations from the games, from you know, like thinking about other games outside of Minecraft. Think about like within Minecraft. Did you draw any inspiration from like watching other Minecraft events? I think the biggest Minecraft event that. We all can, I think, draw a little inspiration mm -hmm. from is MCC. Of course. Um, MCC, in a way, drew inspiration for us to have something similar, but actually kind of focus on doing things that MCC wasn't doing or doing the opposite of MCC. Um, and I think that came with its own struggles, but that's mm -hmm. a different discussion. But I, I think a lot of that was seeing that. And then, of course, other events that we had played in before. Um, there was an old um event that i played in called minecraft legends and so there were some things we saw there that we thought that was cool that that would that'd be cool to see replicated but maybe in our own way and maybe changing it up to give it our own style to it and maybe fix the things that we saw were wrong and then uh, again back to the mcc like seeing something like wow mcc does this really well but we don't really like this aspect of it maybe we're going to do this a completely different way and and then also through owning an event, it allows you to see events that you've actually never heard of before. I've mm -hmm. heard of a million different events that like were actually big, huge, and had huge communities and streamers that I have watched a lot. And I just had no idea that they were in some of these events. I think the biggest one that I saw, and I, I think you two may know it. I, I don't I don't really know, but uh, it's called Block Wars. Oh, really? Um, it's a relatively it. small mm -hmm. event. Mm -hmm. Yeah, relatively small event. No one really knows about it. But uh, that was one that after we started creating our event, we found out about that was just super cool to see. Um, it's really cool to see. I think uh, we drew some inspiration from y'all's uh, social media. Mm -hmm. You guys were just really well put together. Um, had a lot of great things. You guys were really uh, bringing that community on a very social platform where I think a lot of Minecraft creators are from. So uh, I think... 
I think a lot of it was um, a good portion of it was our original ideas, but there were definitely a lot of key aspects that we drew from other events. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm curious to hear what you, when you say, you know, you're looking at MCC and you're like, we want to do things differently. What were like the things you're like, they're doing this and we want to do it this way because it'll either be different or we think it'll be better. Like what were a couple of examples of that? I would say the biggest one and the one that gets a lot of controversy sometimes is uh, I just really dislike the top two teams competing at the end mm -hmm. idea. I just don't find it entertaining as a viewer. Um, and that's no shade to anybody who does do that. Everyone runs their event how they want to, and it's it's them, it's competitive in their own way. And I'm not bashing anyone for doing that. I just, as a viewer, when I watch MCC and I watch other events, I don't find that method so fun to watch. Because sometimes I'll watch people like Captain Sparkles, hmm. and they will do great through like game five. And then by game five or six, you kind of you kind of, as a chat, kind of realize, oh, it, it doesn't look like our team's going to make the top two. And you kind of feel a little bit of a vibe shift. You kind of feel a little bit down. You're not trying or you're not as excited for the rest of it that you had when you were playing prior. So the biggest thing that we took in Out of Crown Quest is no matter what placement you are, uh, team-wise, you're going to be able to be a part of the finale. Mm -hmm. You're going to be able to have a chance to be able to win even if you're in 10th place, which we did have a team in 10th place win it all, it, you should be allowed. Now, of course, first place in our event has an advantage um, over 10th place, but we want to make sure that everyone has a chance until the final second of the event. Um, because that just seems it's more fun for the players. It's more fun for the viewer. You feel like you, you truly are in it no matter what. And if you do bad, you don't have to just be down or you don't have to be discouraged because the chance is still there you, you still can show off more and do more without having to worry about like wow like we're in seventh place like i don't think we're gonna get top two and like it was it was a fun event but i could have done better like mm -hmm. like you don't really feel that like you kind of feel that like in a mass amount at the end when mm -hmm. when it's finally decided but it's not it's not as much or it's not as early in the event as it sometimes can be yeah i see so just trying to extend the length that everyone feels like they're still up for the chance of winning the event because like you said absolutely in, in mcc sometimes if you have a few bad first games you're only halfway through be like oh our chances don't look good mm -hmm. um i'm curious though for a follow-up on that question there's obviously a big discussion around minecraft events about whether they're supposed to be competitive you play to win or you play to have fun. Mm. How do you kind mm. of view as what, you know, the players and the teams in Crown Quest, like how do you want them to play? This is a hard question, but in a good way, because mm -hmm. you want both realistically. You, you want them to have both. And that's, that's what I feel that is like the most important thing. Because yes, you want to have fun, but you should be able to have fun in anything you do. If you're in a tournament specifically, there should be a touch more focus on the competitive aspect because that's what you signed up for. You signed up to compete against other streamers. You should be able to, if you're going to enter into an event, you should be able to have fun in competing, no matter the skill level you have. And if you don't already find fun in competing, then why sign up for the event at all? Like, I get you want to have fun in Minecraft, but there's a million different ways to be able to do that. If you're going to sign up for a tournament, specifically signing up for a tournament, all tournaments have the, I feel like the overall standard is you're going to compete against other creators or other people. You should have that competitive aspect. So I think it's both, mm -hmm. but I think that competitive should be more heavily focused on. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I, I was going to mention, you know, specifically with Crown Quest, uh, Crown Quest uh, what is your personal favorite uh, of the games? Which it might be hard to question, but what is your personal favorite? Ooh. Okay, so we've had, um, I'll give a little context. We've had a, a variety of different games, and each, uh, a bunch of the moderators have their own game idea that they've created, and they've spent a huge part in making. So if I'm going to go biased, I'm going to go one 
the games I created, which was Tectonic. It's a TNT run type game, but you move from platform to platform uh, horizontally rather than vertically. That way that every time you're on a platform, you only have one chance. You don't have some sort of chance when you fall. Um, I find that to be my most fun game, but that's because I'm a little bit biased. But if I'm going to go unbiased, uh, I'm going to go with I'm going to go with The Hunt. Uh, mm-hmm. The Hunt is a 4v4 bow game similar to a battle box type thing, but there's no objectives and there's only bows. And I, I find it fun because it allows you to show off your individual skills, but it also allows you to work as a team. Um, and you're rewarded points-wise for both. And I, I just find that fun because it allows you to show off your skills while also being able to make that strategy, have that communication. I, I feel like the best point of like the biggest time in the event for team synergy is during the hunt. And I just think that's the, the most fun you can have is during mm-hmm. that. Yeah. That makes sense. Saturday. I don't remember if we watched the crown quest where those games were in. Cause I, we watched we, we three. Did. Oh, okay. I'm in my, well, not tech, not tech. Ton. I think um we watched the hunt though. Okay. I remember watching that one. They, I'm not. This is no fault of anyone except my own terrible memory. But all event, all events start to blend together if I don't watch them like re- recently ish, which is my fault. Totally makes sense. And make, no, no, there there are a lot of events right now. So one day I need to sense. make a giant doc, uh, spreadsheet slash word doc that just lists every event, every game, two sentences to explain the game. Then I won't forget. <laughs> then I'll share that everywhere, and then we can make a tier list, and then the community can get up in arms again uh anyway i feel like we get up arms for everything we do days. anyway similar to like what's your favorite game that you've had that you have an event what's been the favorite moment of you know running the event live that either you from the admin perspective or you went back and you know watched the moment from the uh, players perspectives what's been the coolest thing to have happen hmm the coolest thing or like a favorite memory it could be both it can be one of each you know Okay, okay. Um Wow. That's a really that is a really really great question. Um I think the the number one moment that sticks into my head is in Crown Quest three. Uh we had a player named Mighty Brothers One. They are very, very into getting high in one of our race games, Marathon, and they always want top 10 and it's like the thing that they strive for every single time they talk so heavy in the player server prior and they're always about how they're gonna get top 10 this event and they got they cut 11th <laughs> in the game and you cut over to their stream and they have this super sad um latino soul singer singing <laughs> um <laughs> singing in the background and mighty brothers is just crying now it's not real tears it yeah. it's for the bit but he is just crying because he got 11th and it is it is one of the funniest moments like i i, I don't know it i i had the most amount of fun seeing that because I, I love seeing somebody like have like a like a genuine like like true emotion to a game that we created and to see them like have that much fun to make clips like that it was just it was really cool to see. Yeah. I'm sure it was a very funny one as well to see. It's a play of that reaction for a solid probably like three, four minutes. Mm. As their teammates are still racing. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Just straight deafened and <laughs> blasting the music. That's funny. Um, and then back to like, you know, working on the event, creating it. What have been some of the struggles you've had during the development process? And then how have you kind of worked your way through it whether it was like a game design issue a coding issue or something else that you're just trying to fit work your way through that is a that is another superb question um before i answer that let me just drop this real quick i'll put that right there um that's the clip by the way in nice. the uh the general I'll, I'll, channel might be, um you're gonna put it in the video i will put it in the video then it's been linked Okay, so I think it goes with starting off. Um, again, we were very, very new to all of this. So certain things that 
we later found out are such a pivotal thing to owning a Minecraft event. We just didn't know. Um, and you guys are probably well experienced with plugins like multiverses and stuff and being mm -hmm. able to use multiple worlds for an event. That wasn't something we had much knowledge of. Um, so things like that kind of got in the way. And then also uh, picking out a good server provider. And in Crown Quest 2, we had a huge issue with chunk loading. And that was all um, server-based. Mm -hmm. um, the players had perfectly good PCs and setups, but a lot of our things just weren't appearing. There were, there were players uh, doing the ice boat race in Marathon on nothing. They were floating <laughs> in the void because the chunks weren't loading. And, and that, was, that was a huge struggle because we had put so much work into the event and half of it couldn't even be seen because of the chunk loading and it just led to so like such a wide variety of issues that it just that was a huge hump to overcome because it felt like like the event was kind of leaning to a large decline after that because that was only our second event and it was having such massive issues and i think uh, really digging deep and trying to research those kind of things and ask around like i think i joined so many different different discord servers just talking to people and asking questions and just trying to figure out i think that was the moment where it was it was really difficult to kind of find a solution to something like that and when we finally did it, it was it was extremely satisfying it was mm -hmm. extremely satisfying seeing the work we got to put out actually be seen and enjoyed by the players so yeah mm -hmm. i think that was yeah, the I biggest mean, issue in the beginning chunk loading is like the bane of race games especially you know because that's the kind of game where players have to travel really long distance. You have a bunch of people online constantly loading chunks if they're in different areas, especially, you know, uh, with Marathon, it is one long race. So it's mm -hmm. it's a bigger area. Um, it actually it reminds me, I think it must have been probably back when um, uh, it was still called Frost War, back when Pandora's Box was still called Frost War. Uh, one of their race games, there was like a corner that every time you turned it, it would like load a chunk and it would lag your game out for a second. And like, it was this nightmare in testing that they could just not figure out. And eventually it was fixed <laughs> and like people's times immediately got like 10 seconds faster because no one was lagging anymore. Oh yeah. I bet that felt great to figure out. <laughs> Probably did. Minecraft is such a fun game that we work in. That is mm -hmm. very easy yeah. to make things happen. Mm -hmm. Very easy. <laughs> uh related to i i don't know if you call it a struggle but when you're mm -hmm. getting uh, crown quest is an app like pe people apply to play in it how do you go mm -hmm. through that process of deciding who's going to play who's going to be on what teams and by ensuring and ensuring you're having your team balancing you're ensuring that people who play before get to play but you're also getting new people involved how do you balance mm -hmm. all that i think the biggest thing um is just determining kind of uh, a set standard of morals that you want to have going on in the future. Uh, the biggest thing that I have is I like to bring around 20 new people every event and 20 returners. Mm -hmm. And I like to have a variety of different returners that come. In. And those can returners can be of all different skill and the newcomers can be of all different skills. Um, the newcomers, sorry, the returners are there to help provide guidance and provide help to a lot of teammates and a lot of newcomers that may not be so annoyed because we're such a new event, not a lot of people are going to know everything about the event. Well, some of these returners who spent days and nights grinding to practice and VOD watch and learn, they will know. So mm -hmm. they'll be able to help. And I want to make sure that everyone has an opportunity. So um, even before going into accepting applicants i always have in my mind that i'm gonna have around two returners and two newcomers on every single team that way that there's two returners that can bounce off of each other and then there's two newcomers that can be able to stick together and be like hey i don't know anything you don't know anything we can stick together and learn from these two guys we teamed with like instead of just three three returners talking down to this i'm not talking down but kind of like overwhelming this one newcomer there can be another newcomer that can be like hey me and me and blank don't really understand like can you explain it again and so i always try to follow that system but then when i go into actual applications uh we recently did this new system but it's it's uh, followed around the same we, we, we've been doing it for a while but we now made it a little bit more official on paper so mm -hmm. returners compete against returners to get back in and newcomers compete against newcomers 
That way that newcomers that may never who may not know a single staff member, may not know anything about Crown Quest, they're not going against the seven time participant who is friends with all the staff and knows everything and all that like they're not underneath heavy odds. We want to make sure everyone has a fair and uh, balanced chance to be able to get in. So we always separate those two people, those two groups into categories. And then I look, when I'm looking at newcomers, I look at how consistent of a streamer you are. For me, I don't really care about the numbers because I don't really see a huge difference with someone with 200 followers and someone with 900 followers. There's not really a difference. Like to a small creator, that's a huge difference. But when it comes to actual viewing and community wise, it's not a huge difference. Now, there are huge differences if you have like someone that's 15,000 and partnered on Twitch and someone who maybe has 2,000. That's a little bit different. But I focus more on having consistency and having a community. If, if Crown Quest can be brought to a wide variety of people, I'd rather have that than just stuffing the uh, lineup with people who are MCC testers and people who are, I don't know, 60,000 YouTube, uh, so YouTube subscribers, but they have two videos up and one that blew up. Like, I want someone who cares about their viewers enough to want to provide quality and consistent content to them. And now that has caused a little bit of question in the community because some people are like, what is considered consistent? It's just enough to know that like your viewers know that you're going to come back and give content, whether it be a video or a stream or something like that. So those are the kind of people I look for when I invite them. Sometimes I also look for underdogs. Um, I love seeing when people say like, I have never been in an event before. Now, sometimes that's a little risky and I bet you two would definitely know about that um, mm -hmm. as both of you are in events. It's, it's a very risky thing. They don't really understand the etiquette and the overall culture of an event, but they're never going to know until they try. So sometimes it's nice being able to be that kind of uh, guiding light to help them, you know, get accustomed to the community. And sometimes that doesn't go the best, but more times than not, it, it's pretty great because you meet some extremely nice people. Mm -hmm that you otherwise would never have known because their, their credentials aren't as high as others. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that like we're against people who have high credentials. Uh, again, if you're a consistent streamer and you're a consistent content creator, we absolutely would love to have you. And anybody can. It doesn't matter if you have 100 followers or 60,000. Like it, the applications are open to anybody and we accept a wide range of people. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, I mean, looking forward, uh, what, what's the future of Crown Quest like? You know, not, not leaking anything, but just where do you want to go from uh, where you are now? I want to be, I want Crown Quest to, to have a sort of impact like a bridge. Um, I feel like right now there's a little bit of a disconnect in the community between small creators and large creators. Um, I feel like, like, a lot of that is on purpose, but I feel like there are a lot of people who are really great and really fun and really great content creators that are just never, ever going to get recognized by other people. So I think it'd be nice to be able to kind of bridge that. Having an MCCR participant, be able to meet somebody who has like 200 subscribers, like that's cool because that, that will be able to show them a little bit more about the community that they're in and be able to give them some insight on where to take their content, see where... People are, are more enjoying the community. And I want I just want Crown Quest to kind of allow everyone in the community to feel welcome. Uh, and I think a lot of events try and do that too. But I want that primarily between big creators and small creators. Because of course you want a bunch of big creators. It, they're going to give you a lot of exposure, but you never will meet those quality people that you want to invite to your SMPs or could be awesome to help you make a lore script without taking the chance and i will i think the staff and i can all agree that we want to be those people that take that chance mm -hmm. so aside from you know having the similar philosophy of like doing applications of how you uh make teams in these things how else do you see the events role and helping do that i want to i want to word this properly so i'm taking You're a good. quick pause for a second wow that's a great question that's a really great question. Uh, apart from putting people together, um, I think the 
but the biggest way I want to sort of uh, extend that bridge to other creators is just uh, I, I think uh, exposure. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I think a cool part about what MCCR was doing was allowing these big creators to kind of review awesome small creators that had made some pretty great videos. Um, I want Crown Quest to be able to have an aspect like that. Like if we do bring in big uh, content creators like a, like a CPK or or a Tubbo or, or I, I don't know, a, a anybody, I want them to be able to have the chance to be able to have access to some of this content if they're actually wanting to look. Um, not saying what they should be doing with their content. Again, it's their platform. They can do whatever whatever they feel. But just being able to have the tools and accessories, just being able to have some of that more out there. Um, no, otherwise yeah. wouldn't be there like through uh self-promotion channels in player servers like mm -hmm. in our vip lounge we have which is uh the server we have for all past players there's a self-promotion so any creator of any size can go and put their stuff there and they can start to see each other that maybe they wouldn't have seen each other before so just in these smaller communities apart from just playing in it but also being in discourse together it it, it kind of allows I don't know. It kind of just allows the 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 best of the people, uh, the nice people, the 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 kind and giving people to the community, is to be seen by a larger range, and especially by a um, by a uh, bigger audience type of streamer. Yeah, I get it. That sounds like a cool way to you know keep ensuring that Crown Quest can act as a bridge. Then. Mm -hmm. um, We've asked most of the questions we're going to ask you. We'll get uh, we'll give you opportunity to give advice to the people out there in a moment. But is there anything you want to ask us, or any like topics for discussion you want? Think we should just talk about for a little bit about making events. Absolutely. Um, I absolutely do have a question. Yeah. Um, I think the biggest thing is, uh, how do you find people, uh, staff members that you feel like you're truly going to trust to? sort of contribute the betterment or, or look out for the betterment of the event. Um, I find that when I'm looking for staff, I'm always a little skeptical that maybe their intentions are a little a little more on the self-promotion side rather mm -hmm. than the improvement of the event. How do you how do you look when you guys are adding staff? Because Coppola Media I'm, has a lot I of people. Like I've done, yes. I feel like I've done my research. Uh, <laughs> I feel like Coppola Media is a very big uh, company. Uh, how do you yeah. guys find you know, the staff members that you feel like you can trust, uh, is it people you find just in communities you hang out or is it through a interview process or some sort of trial or just, just anything? So, yeah, I, I get, I'll take this because I know this is more my role than Gillen's role. He just gets to code stuff and I get to deal with getting all the organizational things and people. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it's essentially gone in two phases. The first phase was back when we were like small. There was just the YouTube channel. And this was like before Blockburst Series 2 had started. Um, and then we were just, it was just finding other people in the community that were passionate about the same things we were doing. It's like for the YouTube channel of MCC Highlights, uh, we found X, the one and only X, because he made lots of Reddit posts that were like describing, here, here's the VOD crash course of how to play all the games. Like, hey, that's the same writing skills you would need for like a YouTube video script. Come, mm. you want to come join us and help with these? Like, yeah, I'm interested. And so we did that for the beginning part of getting like the initial team. And that's been the basis of most of the people are still on C and CM as a whole. But then it's become once you hit a certain size, you now need a higher, I don't know, higher base skill of someone you're hiring essentially, because mm -hmm. now you're dealing with more complex code for development, bigger builds for building, all these other things. And that's where we've gone more toward a review pro or a interview process, but also still pulling from the community a bit or like people contacts where somebody's like, hey, my friend's a really good builder and they've worked on this other stuff. Should mm -hmm. they apply for this? And we'll be like, yeah, apply. And then we'll be like, oh, they were pretty good. Sometimes that friend applies and they weren't so great, but that's okay because it's still, you know, just getting um more connections and getting people who are interested and already know what they're signing up for and mm -hmm. not having people who are like i don't know what block wars is but i want to work on something that tubbo plays in and be like not nah, you necessarily and i also think your your, your your idea of like yeah some people want like self-promotion which i don't think is inherently a bad thing because mm -hmm. if they want to make themselves look good they have to make the event look good too 
And mm. so it's just finding the mm. balance okay. of like how committed are they going to stay to this or are they looking to like leapfrog from this to the next thing? And that's, I see. you kind of just have to get a feel for a person in that way and see what they've done mm. before and what the like past body of work has been. Okay. So, okay. And you summed up the self, the one I meant by self-promotion perfectly. Mm -hmm. Yes. I don't consider it a bad thing because we allow all, all staff um, in Crown Quest absolutely gets to shout out whatever they like yeah. and pull off their hard work as well. But you're entirely right that, okay, I see. Um, I've yeah. actually got two more questions. Oh, so sorry. My apologies. Oh, I, I did want to add one more thing uh, about that, which is that when it comes to, you know, I mean, if you can consider it like a hiring process, process for getting people to work on stuff mm -hmm. um a lot of it does depend on the scale that you're working at like for kapala media like before it was kapala media and it was just you know like a youtube channel making mcc videos um it, it was a much simpler process as joey explained of just like finding people or me dming joey at mcc weekend saying i wanted to join and then tada i'm a script writer for a mm -hmm. while yeah mm -hmm. um and a lot of it is kind of this you don't really need to make a really complex system if it's just like a group of a dozen people mm -hmm. um and it's almost like you shouldn't really worry about it because at that scale it's just like just get to know people have, have fr like the people you're working with at that scale it's just friends doing fun things together mm -hmm. um and if you actually end up building up to a larger scale you're just going to work out those things later like you're eventually going to build up to creating a hiring process or, and finding people to help with that um so i think it's when you're at a small scale you can just kind of wing it and uh, just be a huge and talk to people and get to know them uh, and you can find people to work with that way okay that makes sense for sure so i've got i've got actually a question for you gillen um involving code the you have a lot of coders that work on a lot of the projects that you do I, i'm safe to assume that like a handful I, there's actually a, a pretty limited number it's one of the it's it's a very time consuming process and it's hard to find people okay. Uh, to put time into things, but mm -hmm. yes. Would, would you say there's about like three or four coders or? I think across all the um, projects, there's 10. I, okay. I mean, we factor yeah, across I everything. I, it, it's more like per project there. There's usually only one, two, maybe like, I think Blockwords might have Blockwords technically has four. three. They have four. It does have four. Okay. Tommy, Aso, Maya, and Jordan. Yep. So the question i have for you is uh, i find that sometimes there can be a little issue especially if timing isn't right or time zones where if two coders are trying to work on something they can't seem to get on the same system or things start to get mumble jumbled because two different people are doing something the way they know how to do it mm -hmm. and sometimes they don't mix how do you go about that especially in organization of code on um, trying to get three or four different coders to work in sort of the same style uh yeah so i've i've gone through this process because i have worked on my own event um with multiple people before um including someone who was a how a 11 and a half hour time difference um mm. which is kind of crazy yeah <laughs> um and it was kind of a situation where actually originally like you were working on the nice thing is that a lot of minecraft events are like mini games so you can just be like hey can you work on this game and you can kind of you don't have to worry about working on the exact mm -hmm. same thing um but one problem we actually had is when we started working um i had set up like a format for how i was making it and floof actually did have a different way and was do it using it a different way so i basically had to kind of spend the time writing like a documentation thing of just like how things are organized and explaining like how the core utility plugin works and like all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff um and it, it was kind of difficult because i could never like because the time is a difference we could never like get in a call and talk right just because it, it was so complicated so i had to like just kind of write a lot of things down um share things via like you know on github or GitLab. um just like show like here how this is here's how this is organized um and yeah it is kind of difficult but one thing i learned is just um to a certain point, you can't get someone to code exactly like you. You can't get someone to write it exactly how you would. Um, and that's OK. Um, and just kind of being accepting of the fact that as long as it is working together and you're kind of doing a similar thing, um, just accepting the fact that other people are going to go about problems differently than you and just making it work. 
Um, so I, I think, yeah, there's like a baseline that you need to get to to make sure you're not, you know, clashing with each other and breaking each other's mm-hmm. stuff. Um, but just being willing to hear out other people's ideas and uh, being willing to accept how they solve problems uh, is very important. Okay. I see. I see. And then the last question I have is for the both of you. Um, I believe that you both are very um, involved in the Block Wars community and Block Wars uh, staff team. So when I first started doing my research uh, for this interview, as well as other events in general by, I would say, Crown Quest 3, I learned about block wars and i kind of looked at your guys website and i looked at some of the things you guys did when you made that shift to having two different types of seasons for different Mm -hmm. types of creators i generally want to know how has that gone having two different groups of sort of communities being played one with being regular block wars and the one being block wars origins because i'd always thought about like well, I, well, I'm not going to be able to get everybody I want into Crown Quest every single event. Mm-hmm. Should I head in a path like this? Or should I try and do something where there's like two separate communities but playing the exact same event? Like, how how is the extension of Origins opposed to regular Block Wars events yeah. We're gone for you guys? I would say, well... I can give the background for, you know, the decision-making process. Essentially, it came from me and Wolfie being like or wolfie coming to me and be like joey this isn't sustainable if you want to keep adding new people and bigger creators to block wars like we can't just keep adding more people because then other people won't be able to play as more people are added so him Mm -hmm. and i talk for a while and brainstorm ideas and we go what if we did this split of the content creator event and the community event or now now said origins we dubbed it that way. Um, there's other ways it's been described, but I think it's the best way that makes sense is there's the content creator and there's the community. And the way we looked at it is the content creator event and the people that typically play in it now, Block Wars is like they come and play in Block Wars on a given Saturday. They do a little prep for it before, during the week, but then they kind of move on after it to the next thing. Their content creator slow is working on the next content thing they're doing. Whereas in the Origins community, it's much more the Block Wars Origins players are very much involved in the whole the picking their team process, talking, like practicing for the event, prepping for the event, VOD reviewing, talking about it, like always active in the Discord, like the players' Discord, and just mm-hmm. having lots of conversations and playing together and being friends like all the time. And so it's very much kept that same community feeling and ensures they mm-hmm. still get like a space to play Block Wars um, mm-hmm. while also doing the content creator side of things which is getting more exposure for block wars to pull in more viewers more fans all the things all the fun stuff i think i think it's gone well i they i know there were initial criticisms of it but all the origin players were on board with it when it was first announced well i won't say all but almost all were on board with it because as one person put very eloquently how could this not be a positive it's more block wars and i was like very true very true thank you Um, And I've still thought back to it and been like, I don't know what other solution would work to make everyone happy and be able to play in the event that doesn't in some way involve expanding how many players can play. Mm -hmm. Which is very rough to do because then it starts to change it to a whole new event. You got more people to rely on to come on on the same day. Yes. Server load. It's rough. So between the creator event and origins, the only things that typically change like development wise is a couple of the maps get tweaked uh, mainly mm-hmm. in move like the parkour like parkour stages um, dropper those ones get tweaked as well as beep test and party would get tweaked to make it harder for the origins players because they are often kind of sweaty gamers yeah and so just making it still feel up to the level that would make it fun for them but aside from that, it's been kept very minimal of the changes allowed in the development side between them, because it's supposed to be for the devs, the coders, all the people doing stuff in the background, finish the event for the content creator day, then don't have to worry about coding anything new for at least a week. Um, do they ever take that advice? No, but they don't have to worry about it. 
And so, that makes sense. And so I think it's gone well. Uh, I, I think within the communities it's gone well, and I haven't heard any pushback in a long while about it. And as well, I'm still curious if anyone else can find other solutions to how they would you know, go about trying to satisfy everyone. Right. Makes sense. Cool. Yeah. Those are great questions right. to us as well. Of course. Thank you for allowing me to, yeah. you know, pick your brains a little bit. Yeah. We're going to wrap up with two last questions. The first will be, what advice do you have for other people trying to create events? And then the one after they'll be, what else do you have to say to shout out to the people? But first, the advice. Um, oh, man. Advice? Do what you want to do. Um, I find that a lot of different events start to close down because they apply so much pressure on themselves to um, do exactly what the community wants. And they want to please every single person individually. And and they do all these things. And eventually the pressure gets so much and they're like, wow, I'm just never going to satisfy. I'm done doing this. If you want to make an event, you're going to not have everybody like what you do. Um, there are some games we have that like, 98% of the community loves and 2% think it's the worst game in the world. You don't have to change the whole game for that 2%. Like if you enjoy it and you and your staff enjoy it, that's, that's all that matters. Now, of course you want to make sure that you do like some of the basic things, like there's a bug or a glitch or something's unfair. You should change that. But if there's something where it's like, like you really enjoy this, but sometimes like a few players don't just do it. You find fun. Uh, that is really, I think what's really pushed the staff along is just, we enjoy what we do and we do our best to make everyone happy, but we focus on what we want crown close to be not trying to fit the standards of anybody who says anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's good advice. And then anything else you want to shout out and let people know and where also they should follow you and crown quest out. Uh, you can find Crown Quest on Twitter dot uh, com slash Crown Quest MC. I would also like to shout out every single um, member of the Crown Quest staff team because without them, we simply wouldn't have it. Um, I forgot to mention someone earlier in the podcast, uh, Gobble Goblin, also known as Loomer, also known as Miles. Uh, shout out to you. I didn't mention you when we were talking about the initial group, but you're great. You've been absolutely pivotal to all of this. I want to thank. Um, I want to thank the head builders, Sakaji Ninja. I want to thank the other builders, Tigers, Joe, uh, Kelvin for picking up code and helping me learn. And I just want to thank Connie's Cat, you know, all the Discord mods, social media, like, and especially the Crown Quest community who have been so nice and supportive. Um, I know that uh, Crown Quest is very different from a lot of events, and there's not a lot of things. There's some things that you really love to see from other events that we don't do, but I appreciate you guys always being supportive, and thank you guys for being uh nice and always being so positive everything that allows me to be able to be in a position like this and have an interview with two great co-hosts and all around just thank you guys for everything but yeah. without the community none of this would be possible so thank you guys a lot yeah. shout out everyone at working on crown quest and part of that community if you haven't seen it uh the links will be in the pin comment or description or both if i remember to do both but they'll be in one of them regardless uh, but yeah, Randy, thank you so much for joining us in the podcast. We hope Crown Cuss keeps going well. Thank you guys so much for having me. I really appreciate it.